ask if anybody had been te any testimonies that they would or praise report that they would like to share um, this afternoon. Um, it's time you can do that right now as we wait for Pastor Nate, okay? Can everybody hear me? Yes, ma'am. I'd like okay. to say, uh, Brother Leon, is this recording yet? Um, let me see. Yeah, Hold yeah, on. It's yeah, already recording. It's already yeah, recording. Yeah, it's to record. Yes. Oh, oh well, I, well, I'm I, not going to say what I was going to say because it's recording. So. Okay, I'm stopping. Did I stop it? Because all, all, all I was all I was going to say was, in my mind. Oh my God. <laughs> I want you to be free. <laughs> okay. I, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I just uh, we had an awesome time in the Lord this past Sunday. I just thank God for my all for an awesome service, front to back. You know, yeah. and I just the everything was all good, and I just want to let all y'all know I love the church family, and I'm uh -huh. I'm proud to be a member of Jerusalem Baptist Church. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Iron Shopping Iron, it's just good that we can all come here on a Wednesday and still worship the Lord with, it's with smiles and spirit and the truth. So yeah. with, that, with that being said, until Pastor Griffin come on, I want us to all bow our heads for a word of prayer. Amen. Wonderful. Wonderful. Amen. Thank you, dear. Anytime. Okay. Heavenly Father, we call on you once again on this Wednesday, Lord God, just to say thank you. Thank, thank you for you. making us to another day to get it right in your word, Lord God. Yes, we thank Lord. you for watching over us and bringing us to this very moment where you would have us to be, Lord God, despite everything that happened to us in life and everything mm -hmm. we may happen to ourselves, Lord God, you saw fit to it to give us another day, Lord God, to get it right. Mm -hmm. Lord God, we ask you to forgive us for all the sins we commit that we know of and sins we commit that we don't know of. We thank ask you to move them as far as the east is from the west, Lord God. But we just yeah. want to thank you for being God all by yourself, Lord God, for being all-knowing for being all powerful and being everywhere, Lord God. Yeah. We thank you for the Holy Spirit you've instilled in us, Lord God. Even yeah. though sometimes we know we don't do the right things, we thank you for being there for us, Lord God. Yeah. Despite yeah. of that, Lord God, we just thank you for each and everything you've done for us in the past, each and everything you're doing for us now, and each and everything you see fit to do for us in the future. Yeah. Right now, Lord God, I'd like to send a special blessing amongst every deaconess, every deacon, every trustee, and every member of the congregation of this church, yes. Lord God, and every future member of this church, Lord God. Yes. I want you to put your heavenly shield around them and protect them with your angels, Lord God. Lord yes. God, special yes. blessing to Pastor Griffin and his wife and his children, Lord God. May you yes. put a hedge of protection around them as they travel the highways and the byways to spread your word, Lord God, because that's all we are here to do, Lord God, to uplift yes. your name and uplift your holy kingdom. Lord God, yes. I ask you to watch over us, be with us, and protect us. And if there's anything I left out of this prayer, Lord God, I ask you to let the Holy Ghost put it for me, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Mm. Yeah. Well, anyone else want to give a testimony or word for the Lord? Hmm. I just like to give honor to God. You know, when I looked, we, um, Greg and I had the opportunity to go babysit our grandchildren in Memphis this week, um, mm -hmm. last week to this week. So we were thankful for the traveling mercies and to spend Thank time. With them. But um, I also, I am so excited that we are getting so many youth, especially young men. It just yes. does heart so well because we just hear so much negative, but we see that our youth are seeking yeah. God more and more. So yeah. um, I said all that to say, all of us need to be praying about what opportunities, how we can minister to these young men because the world ministers to them on the TV, through the, you know, yeah. and everything else. So uh, God is sending them all to us for a reason, y'all. So yeah. um, let's all be praying about it, you know? It does take a village now. So let's see how we can all help, you know, grow them up in the Lord spiritually so that they reach higher heights than we ever have. And yes, that's all I have to say. <laughs> but yes. I am, I'm just so thankful to God that he is sending us youth left and right, regardless of, you know, that we don't, right now we're not offering them, but, you know, all that we could. But let's be praying, y'all, because he's sending them to us for a reason. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. And um, I will say, um, I'm going to read Psalm 103. And it say, praise the Lord, O my soul. All that, all my inner beings praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul. And forget not all his benefits. Who heal, who forgives all our sins and heals all your diseases. Who re redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with loving kindness. And uh, also Psalm 91, which I love. I will read that while we are waiting. So it says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of, of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, My refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinion and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that starts in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come nigh you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to be for you. No plague come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guide you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adler, the young lion and the serpent, you will trample under your feet. Behold, he holds fast to me in love. I will deliver him. I will protect him because he know my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him with long life. I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. I just thank God for showing us his salvation. Father God, in the name of Jesus, you are such a good God, a loving God. And Lord God, not all the time have we done the best that we could. Not all the time have our conversation been good, but Lord God, you're still with us. Lord God, you to told us to be strong and of good courage, and you will strengthen our hearts. Lord God, you said in your word that when we are weak, that you are strong. Lord God, we just thank you for your mercy. We thank you for waking us up this morning. We thank you for your provisions. We thank you for making ways out of no way. We thank you for opening doors, Lord God, that we can't see. Lord God, your word said, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hear my voice and open the door, you will come in and sup with us. Lord God, we thank you for Jerusalem, Lord God. We thank you for the healing power of Jesus. Lord God, we ask that your Holy Spirit would reside in us today. Lord God, please cover us under the blood of Jesus. Cover us with your Holy Spirit. Bring to our remembrance, teach us and guide us and lead us in the way that you would have us to go. Lord, we love you. 
We honor you. We adore you. You are the mighty God, and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Um, is there another um, praise report or just a word for the Lord? It is time as we wait for um, Pastor Nate to join us. He said he would be a few minutes late, so let's give him time. And we thank God for Pastor Nate. Yeah, Amen. this is Brenda. I just want to say um, I thank God for, for keeping my brother here with us a little longer. Amen. Um, he's he's very sick. Um, I... I don't know. God is keeping him for here for a reason. And I'm just asking you all to keep him in your prayers. That's Lorenzo. Just keep him in your <laughs> prayers, your daily prayers. And um, mm -hmm. God will be done. Yes, yes. Thank you. Amen. The word of the Lord said, let not our hearts be troubled. It is not his will that our hearts be troubled. So, we must hold on to his unchanging name. Is there another praise report or a prayer or someone? Uh, yeah, uh, my grandmother would like to read Psalm 91. Okay. All right. You can go ahead. Psalm 91. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Yes. Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Yes, Lord. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the follower and from the noise and pestilence. Yes, he Lord. shall cover thee with His feathers and under His wings shall thine trust. His truth shall be thine shield and bundle. Thou shall not be afraid for the terror by night. No for the arrow that flies by day. No for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. No for the, the destruction that wastes at noon. Day. <clears throat> if thou shall fall at thine side, ten thousand at thine right hand, but it shall not come near thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Yes, because Lord. thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thine habitation. Yes, Lord. There shall no evil before thee, neither yes. shall any plague come near thine dwelling. Yes. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thine way. Yes, they Lord. shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thine foot against the stone. They shall tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shall thine trample under feet, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. Yeah. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. Yeah. I will be with him in trouble. I will yeah. deliver him and honor him with long life. Will I satisfy him and show him my salvation? Glory yes. to God. Glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we see Pastor Nate is, has arrived and we thank him. And we're going to open the floor up to him. Thank you. Thank bless you. you God bless you, Deaconess Parker. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys uh, for your patience with me on this evening. It's running a little bit behind, but thank you uh, for being in position and being prepared. Uh, before we dive in, if you haven't already, I want to encourage you to send a message to somebody you don't see in Bible study. Uh, to let them know uh, that the table is set and the feast of the Lord is going on. Uh, communicate to them that uh, their presence is needed. It's important uh, for yeah. the body of Christ. Iron sharpens iron. And um, even if it's just them being here, uh, yeah. it's encouragement to, to, to their brothers and sisters in Christ. So if you haven't already, I want to encourage you to take about 30 seconds and send that message out. Uh, let them know that, that they're needed in the building. I appreciate all you guys uh, for being in position and being uh, ready tonight. I'm excited to share. 
Hallelujah. 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 Uh, and so uh, we're going to go back to the second chapter of the book of Luke. Uh, so if you would uh, position yourselves there as we prepare our hearts and minds to go before the throne of grace. Father, we love you and we thank you because there's none like you. Um, one who would love us like you do, one who would care like you do, uh, one who would make it a point to purchase back a humanity that technically was already yours. Uh, but we had a debt that we had incurred, a debt that we could not pay. And for this cause, you agreed to come in the form of a man and pay a debt that you did not owe. So we thank you on tonight. Um, and our desire here, God, is to get closer to you. Our desire here is to learn more of you. Our desire here is to have you to speak to our hearts, Holy Spirit. And so we yield ourselves to you in this moment, completely, totally, humbly, and without fail, have your way. Great God that you are. Speak to our hearts, encourage us, lift us, draw us closer to you. This, after all, is our heart's desire. This is our earnest plea. We love you and we bless you and we thank you for it in advance. It's in the name of Jesus the Christ that we pray this to God, our Father, through the power and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you in advance. Amen. Okay. Amen. 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 All right. So we talked last week uh, about the reason for the season. We're going to continue that journey uh, tonight. We got a little bit ways into it last week. I believe we were uh, uh, right around uh, the birth and the angel of the Lord speaking to the shepherds last week. And so we're going to go back uh, to the second chapter of the book of Luke. Um, second chapter again of the book of Luke. Um, and, and you will find us somewhere between the first and the uh, first and the 20th or so verse. Uh, we're just going to talk it out on tonight. Um, I think that to bring things into perspective once more, it is important for us to understand the adversity of that is being faced in this moment. Oftentimes, individuals will find it difficult to understand your praise, mostly because they did not understand your pain. They saw what you incurred from a distance. They saw what you experienced from afar off. But when you are in the trenches fighting for that which God has spoken over your life, when you are taking the brunt of the bruises, when you are crying the majority of the tears, deliverance hits differently for you. It means something different. When, when God saves your life uh, from whatever the case, whatever the situation may be, it hits differently from you. And, and, and you don't have to take my word for it. We can look in the text. Uh, and if we fast forward it to the story, of Mary Magdalene and 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 how uh, Christ saved her from what had oppressed and had her bound uh, upon the time of his death, burial, and resurrection when everyone else went back to their uh, uh, places and their abodes and when everyone else uh, walked away after his body came up missing, it was her who stayed in the garden tomb. It was her who wept right there until... Uh, the gardener, or what she thought was the gardener, appeared to her and she pleaded with him, just tell me where he is and I'll go get him myself. Um, because when Jesus saves your life, you don't want to move forward without him. It's one thing if he just, you know, moves some things around, changes it, but when he saves your life, you don't want to move forward without his hand and his presence and every aspect of your being. Um, and, and so because, because 
Mary and Joseph were the only ones who really understood the difficulty of their journey. Again, guys, we're talking about at least an 80 mile trip. We're talking about at least an 80 mile trip uh, to Bethlehem. That's what we're talking about here. Um, we're talking about averaging probably 20 miles a day. Uh, she's on the donkey averaging about 20 miles. This is a woman who's nine months pregnant. She's nine months pregnant on the back of a donkey, 20 miles a day, at least a four day trip, arduous journey. And you get into the home of your father, David, and, and you're looking for a place just to be able to, to press the promise out. And it seems as if there's no room. It seems as if no provision has been made. I would pause here just momentarily to encourage someone and even myself uh, that just because the community around you and humanity at large seems not to have made space for your promise does not mean that God has not made space for your promise. Uh, many of us, I believe, would have been uh, uh, extremely put off and rightfully so about the fact that we have endured such hardship only to find that there have been no provisions made. How could there not be provisions made? Yeah, I, I want to just our humanity for a moment. How could there not? Gabriel came and told me that this was on the way nine months ago. They knew it was coming. And so we've got to fathom, right, that if the God who foresaw this, and, and we can op operate in our humanity and say nine months ago, but let's go a little bit further and say the God who foresaw this uh, before the foundations of the world, before he ever spoke and said, let there be light, and there was light. After all, it is declared that Jesus Christ was slain before the foundations of the world. And so here it is. If God knew that this time was coming, how could there not be a provision, a space made, a place that was deemed acceptable for the promise to come forth? And so that part is difficult, you know after we've pressed and after we've pushed and after we've overcome obstacles and after we've beat, beaten the odds to get to that place and only to realize that it seems as if I was not expected. What, I, what I'm trying to communicate here is that God knows even that part. He knows, he understands that part. Right. Uh, and I think it's important, uh, Deacon and Cheryl, that we talk about that part and, and instead of overlooking that part like it just didn't exist. And some might say, well, I don't know, Pastor Nate, that's not really in the book. It don't say that they felt no kind of way. Would you have felt some kind of way? That don't have to. Some things don't have to be included. I'm a human. I'm a person. Would you have felt some kind of way? If you change your whole life dynamic, if you obeyed, if you accepted it, Mary accepted this thing. Like it, it wasn't, it wasn't just like Gabriel said it was gonna happen, and she accepted, she said, be it unto me. That's what she said. She she accepted the weight of glory upon her life. Only to get there. And it not seem as if a space had been made. And so I, I, I want to jump back in to the story uh, in the field, in the field, uh, that the angels, the angel of the Lord appeared to the shepherd as they were keeping watch in their flock by night in the field. Uh, as they as they were keeping watch of their flock by night in a place of can I say a place of vulnerability uh, because typically as nighttime would hit uh, Deacon Avery you would move the sheep into uh, a more protected place 
some pastor of sorts. They would not be left out in the field at night. Uh, too many predators, too many what ifs, too many variables. Uh, but here we, we we find the shepherds in the field in a in a in a in a in a predatorial playground, if you will, working to accomplish a task that they had been given. And so while they are working in the field, the angel of the Lord comes into this place of adversity, into this place where not only them but what they watch could easily be targeted and he brings good news. Now, if we were to pause here uh, just momentarily, uh, Deacon Parker, what I would point out and suggest here is, is, is that what we see in the position of the shepherds being in the field is exactly what Jesus has done by way of being born. Uh, heaven belongs to God. Uh, its vastness, its glory, its magnificence is all his. And, and when in fact uh, Lucifer, the angel that he had met, made and created for worship, uh, attempted to rise up against him, he was cast out into the earth realm. Um, he was defeated in the heavenlies and he was put in the earth realm and as a result of his placement here he begins to wreak havoc on God's prized possession which is humanity or Adam and so because God is so God and God's word is uh uh final authority in everything he does. Um, when Adam fell, God could not simply step on the scene and say, all right, start over, reset, let's, let's get it out of the way. And he couldn't come down and make a declaration and act as if it didn't occur. He couldn't do that because when he created Adam, he gave him all power and all authority in the earth realm. And when Adam lost it, the only person who could get it back was someone who was kin to him. Uh, this is where the term a kinsman redeemer comes from. And in biblical uh, history, if you were to lose property or possession, uh, we talked about it a little bit last week. We talked about the Shunammite woman and what it would have been like if she had not had a son. And if she would have lost all she had, what would have had to happen was that a kinsman, someone who was of relation to her, who was a male, would have to come in in order to redeem that which she had lost. This is where the term and the terminology of kinsman redeemer comes from. So God is so much God that he had given authority to Adam and he said, I can't redeem you just by saying so, but I've got to be kin to you in order to purchase back that which you lost. And so Christ comes in the form of a man, kin to me, in order to purchase back that which was lost by me. And he steps off of his throne and out of his dominion and out of the majesty of heaven, and he comes down into the field, into the place, the predatorial playground. He comes down into the field in order to redeem humanity. And so it's in the field that the angel finds the shepherds keeping watch over their flock at night. And this is what he says, uh, fear not for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Uh, he says, he first of all, uh, he speaks directly to what they were feeling in the moment. I think it's important to understand that God knows how you feel. That not only does he know how you feel, but he cares enough about you to speak to how you feel. Uh, and, and he speaks in that moment 
And when he speaks in that moment, he says, fear not, for I bring good tidings of great joy, which will be for you and all people. And this is what this is what he says. Uh, in essence, he begins to give us the the definition of what the Christmas, the more Christ, the gift of the anointed one and his anointing celebration should be about for all people. Uh, he says it's personal, it's positive, it's universal. And it's a time of celebration. I'm going to say it one more time. Uh, the angel declares it's personal. I bring you, you, it's personal. Good tidings of great joy. Um, it's positive, right? Um, uh, Jesus says, I, I, I came uh, to win back that, that which was lost. It's positive. It's a positive message. I think it's important as a body of Christ that we don't lose that, not only in this season, but in general that we don't lose that. Because it's really easy for us to become a group of people that points toward everything the world does wrong and chastise them for everything they do wrong and never really give them the good news. Uh, the good news is not that you're a sinner. The good news is that you're a sinner saved by grace. That's the good news. And so often we focus on the part that's broken rather than focusing on what God fixed. And what God fixed was this, that every sin of humanity was nailed to the cross with Jesus, whom we call the Christ, that he who knew no sin was made sin so that we could be made the righteousness of God in him. That's good news. That's good news. Do me a favor. Just ask yourself, when the last time I told somebody the good news? Right? Because again, right, it's and I'm not knocking because it's part of our humanity. It's real easy for us to get caught up in that thing. Where, you know, you don't need to be doing this. You know, you don't need to be doing that. You know, you were raised better than this. You know, your mama wouldn't like that. You know, that your folks weren't about no foolishness now. And you all caught up in that. You, it's real easy to get stuck in that cycle where all we tell people is about their brokenness. And we never tell them about God's healing. All we tell them is, is about how they come up short. And what we fail to communicate is how he makes up the, the space in between. That's the good news. So the angel tells them, he says, it's personal. I'm bringing it to you. Do me a favor and just tell yourself, it's, it, it, he brought it to me. He brought it to me. God cared enough to find me right where I was. I want to make it clear. They weren't in a tabernacle. They weren't in a temple. They weren't in a place of worship. They weren't somewhere studying the Torah. They weren't somewhere, they, they weren't praying on the side of a mountain somewhere. They were engaged in the task that they had been given and they were putting themselves and they knew it in a harmful situation by doing so and God met them right where they were. If God did it for them, he's not a respecter of person and he'll meet you right where you are. This is the victory that we can believe is on the way as the body of Christ. If we know individuals who may be lost and we know individuals who may, may be drowning and struggling with the numerous vicissitudes of life, that God can and will meet you right where you are. I can take the shepherd's testimony if I need to, but if I'm really telling the truth, I don't need to take their testimony to tell you that God will meet you right where you are because he met Nate right where he was. He came and found me right where I was. And so every now and again, we need to get out of this saved, sanctified, pious attitude that forget where we were when God found us and realize the truth of the matter is you didn't go looking for God. God came looking for you and he found you and he gave you a desire to come to the house of the Lord that night or that day. And he gave you a desire to come up and give the preacher your hand and God your heart. And it wasn't because you just craved it or you wanted it or you desired it. it was God's yearning and pulling and desire for you. That's good news. And it's personal. Hmm. And it's positive. This is what, this is, this, again, the reason for the season. 
The reason for the season is personal. For unto us, a child is born. And unto us, a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. For unto us, this is good news. And it's news that as a body of Christ, we need to want to share. Hmm. And then this is what he says after that. It's universal. It's universal. Can you just repeat that? You can type it. You can say it. I just need everybody up here. To, it's universal. It's universal. Thank you. Thank you, Deacon Edwards. It's universal. It's universal. It's universal. I'm going to say it just a couple more times because I need you to get it down in your spirit. It's universal. It's universal. We need to hear that as the body of Christ because every now and again, not on purpose, I don't believe it's on purpose and I don't think it's intentional, but every now and again, we try to take sole ownership of Jesus Christ. Like he only came for the church. <laughs> like, like he only belonged to us and that nobody else. Uh, but the angel said, now don't get mad with me. The angel said for all people, all, all, all means no one being left out. All means all encompassing. This is the reason, again, that he came in the way that he came. This is the reason that he was not born in a palace uh, with, with, with Caesar Augustus. Or, 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 or This is the reason that he was not nobility or aristocracy. This is the reason that he was born in a stable in the side of a mountain, a barn where smelly animals were and peasants would dwell so that everybody could have complete access to whom they call the Christ, Jesus, the gift of humanity, and he's a gift for all people. For God so loved the world that he gave the very best he had to give. His only begotten son. It is universal. And so then, here we go again. It becomes a task, a job, part of the DNA of his church, his bride, to communicate to others who may not know yet, Jesus came for you too. And Jesus loves you too. And Jesus wants you too. Like, like we may be angry with people uh, we may be mad with folks. Uh, we may, we may deep down, now deep, now you don't have to wave your hand or say amen to this or nothing like that. No, nobody know I'm talking about you. We might deep down have a little bit of, of, of Jonah in us. We might, we might have a little bit of God told us to go to Nineveh. And, and, and some of us said deep down, I don't want to go because I know if I preach, you'll forgive them. And I don't want them to be forgiven. We might have a little bit of that. We, we might, instead of giving the good news to somebody who we know needs it, and God would change their whole life, some of us hold back because I don't necessarily want their life to be changed, preacher. Not after what they did to me. <laughs> I, want to, I want them to stay right where they are and watch me shine. I'm not saying none of us think that way, praise God. You might know somebody who thinks that way. So if that's the case, share it with a friend. Amen. The point is this, that Jesus came for all. 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 And after the angel tells them that it's personal, it's positive, and it's universal, he gives them instructions on where to look. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, 
I'm trying not to get excited. I could go, I could just take that whole thing. He gives them instructions on where to look. I'm going to explain why I got so excited about the instructions he gave them on where to look, Deacon Edwards. I, I got so excited about uh, the instructions he gave them on where to look because he didn't tell them in the place all of us would have imagined. He didn't, he didn't tell them to go look in the tabernacle. He didn't tell them to go look in the temple. Um, he didn't tell them to go look in the halls of the great thinkers and the sages of the ages. That's not where he told them to go look. That's not where he told them to go look. He told them that you will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, milk rags, lying in a desolate place. In a dirty place. In a In a place that none of us would want to lie. He said, that's where you'll find him. Huh. And, and this is the place, I'm, I'm going to say this part and then I'm going to open up the floor for comments or thoughts. Um, what really got me, uh, Deacon and Cheryl, is that the angel never that he never tells them. Uh, well, hold on, I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna read it so you don't think I'm making it up. It says, uh, glory to God, peace on earth among those whom he is pleased. When the angels, hold on, when, okay. And it says, and this will be a sign for you. You'll find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in the manger. And suddenly there was an angel with the angel, a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom God is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. This is the part that really got me excited, uh, Deacon and Cheryl. The angels gave them all the information that they needed, and they never told them to go. I'm going to say it again. The angels gave them all the information that they needed. The choice of whether to go or not to go belonged to the shepherds alone. The Bible says it. Again, I ain't saying it. I ain't making nothing up now. The Bible says, and they said one to another, let's go and see this thing that we have been informed of. What is that? Why is that important, Pastor Nate? Because many times in life, God will give you all the information you need and leave the decision whether or not to go up to you. Uh, many times in life, uh, God will show you everything you need to see. Uh, God will communicate to you what needs to be communicated. And you're waiting for him to give you a command to do what it is that you know you need to do. And God is saying, but I'm going to leave that choice up to you. I'm, 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 I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave. I've communicated to you uh, how important it is uh, for you to continue to grow in your spiritual walk. I've communicated to you uh, how important it is for you to make me the priority in your life. I've communicated to you what your life looks like when you make me the priority in your life. I've communicated to you the impact that it not only has on you, but everything attached to you, your children, your grandchildren, your friends, your neighbors, your business, everything will change when you when you solidify your walk in relationship with me, I've shown you all of that. Now, what you gonna do with it? Somebody do me a favor and just tell yourself the choice is yours. The the the, the choice is yours. What you gonna do with it? I, I've shown you how impactful it is when you communicate your testimony about how I came in and transformed your life to others. I've shown you that. I've shown you how, how people respond to the new you. Cause some of us don't look nothing like what we used to look like, praise God. 
uh, uh, some of us, some of us people uh, uh, say, what? You in, you in ministry now? Right? And, and, and God said, I've shown you what it looks like and what it feels like when they see the new you. I've allowed for you to see how much impact and influence you can have on those who are lost. Now, what you going to do with it? What you going to do with it? Now, I don't want you to hear what I'm not saying, okay? I, I want you to invite whoever your spirit and your, and your heart tells you to invite to church. But I want to really encourage this body of Christ. Uh, we don't just have to invite church folks to church. Because sometimes we get stuck in that. And rather than going after the folks who don't know Jesus, we go after people who belong to other churches. And we don't have to do that. The Bible says that the harvest is plentiful. The harvest is not the people who go into church down the street. That's, I mean, that's cool if God speaks to them and tells them that, you know, it's time for them to, oh, that's fine, you know, but that's not really the heart, that's not the harvest that scripture is talking about. Scripture is talking about the harvest of lost souls and the need for individuals who are willing to work, here we go, in the field, unafraid, unashamed because of the gift you've been given and your willingness and ability to communicate that gift to others. We've been given all the information that we need. Now what you're going to do with it? I'm going to pause here and open up the floor for thoughts and comments. So many unanswered questions so many unanswered questions and in praying for wisdom to guide my tongue and to guide my footsteps and then I have to figure out whether to wait or to go and God leaves that part up to me after he's given me all the other stuff that I need he leaves that decision up to me those are un unanswered questions. Uh, and, you know, I'll scratch every bit of my hair out of my head and be just as bald-headed as you. They're just unanswered questions. They're just unanswered questions. And and I I'm guessing that as I grow more spiritually, he will, he will reveal to me that part that I need to know in my spirit, futuristic. I don't know. So many unanswered questions in what you're raising right now. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Deke. I appreciate you, Deacon Avery. And and yeah, it's not always a clear cut thing, right? It's we 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 really wish it was. Uh, but I, I think a lot of that part God allows us some space for, and he says, now come communicate to me about it. Tell me that part. Exactly what you just said. Tell me, I want to do the right thing, but I don't know what that is right now. And so what I need from you is a little bit more guidance, God. Uh, I, I, I need to feel like you're ordering my steps. And, and, and whichever way you order me, that's the way I'm going to go, right? Uh, because it's not always easy to make that call. It's, it's, it's not always easy to make that decision. And we, we wish it were, right? I mean, even look at the shepherd's dilemma. What people oftentimes don't talk about, D, is they left their sheep in the middle of the field. At night, what are we thinking right now? Are we serious? This could go very wrong. Like, I, I, need, I need us to think from the humanistic perspective just momentarily and think what that conversation would have looked like coming back to your boss. Uh, where's, where's all the goods? We lost them. Why? We had a vision. A vision of what? Uh, the son of God. Where at? A, a, a stable with some animals. Well, you go let that vision pay your bills and, and get on out of my house, my face. You see what I'm saying? Like, like, we don't think in those contexts, but that was a real dilemma. 
And, and, and so, and so the fact is now watch this. When we first started off tonight, we talked about how iron sharpens iron, right? And how just your presence here is important. Why is your presence here important? Because there comes a time where we just gonna have to encourage each other and say, let's go together. Right. I appreciate the fact that the angel didn't go to one shepherd. I, cause, cause, cause one shepherd might've stayed put. No, I go, that was nice, but I'm gonna act like I ain't get that message. Cause uh, but but sometimes we need people to talk back to us and to say, Did you see that? I saw that. Did you feel that? I felt that. What do you think we ought to do? We can't just sit here, not after what we saw, not after what we felt. Right. That's why it's important when we worship together. That's why it's important that we come collectively into the house of the living God together. Because we need to be able to look at each other and say, Deacon Avery, did you feel that? Did you feel the move of God just now? I felt that. Bro, Steve, did you feel that? I felt that. I felt that. Deacon the show, did you feel that? I felt that. What are we going to do about it? We need to move together, right? We need to do something about it. And so exactly what you said, Deacon, is a very real thing. Thank you so much for bringing that up. That's a very real thing. And it's not anything to be ashamed of, right? For anybody who, who might be uh, concerned or or not certain or anything like that. But this is where the action of us hearing from God, right? Us being honest about, honest with him about where we are and how we feel. And then strategically positioning ourselves around people who watch this are working for the same thing. Mm. You hear me? You got to be working for the same thing, Right? Uh, because sometimes we could be in the same place and not working for the same thing. And, and that don't mean I can't love you. It just means in those moments, I can't allow you to be a part of my decision-making pro. We ain't working for the same thing right now. We, we need to be working for the same thing. We're working for the same thing. Then we can encourage each other. We can sharpen each other. We can look at each other and we can say, we need to make a move based on what God just showed us. Thank you so much for sharing, Deke. Uh, bro, Steve, I see you. What's up, man? Is it on, honey? Yes. <laughs> yeah, Pastor, it's, it's just you telling this story, and when you stop and you think about, like you say, he came, he came for all. He came for all of us. And... It, it wasn't about what I did have or what I didn't have. And you think about, you think about man, you think about the, the, the strings that come attached with, I got to, I got to do this. I got to do that. But with God, like you say, it's free. He, he, he gives us the information and then allow us to make the decision. He he isn't forced. It isn't forced upon us, like he's knocking when he's knocking on our heart. In the beginning, it's loud. It's real loud. Bam, bam, bam. Then time goes on. It might get a little fainter, a little fainter, a little faint, faint. Are we paying attention? And then. Like you say, in this type of setting, I love this because we learn from one another. We get to have this dialogue. I may, like you say, it's, it's for the same thing. And I may have not been understanding what was really going on. And Brother Avery, can sure somebody speaks. And then I get it. And 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 when we minister to others and one and um uh, and our friends and stuff, and God leads us, we think we don't have the capability to express where he wants us to go, but we do when we just don't be afraid, step out on faith. And the more we study, the more is revealed to us. And I, I just said, I just want to say it's amazing, Pastor. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you so much, Brother Steve. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The more we study, the more is revealed to us. The more we ask and it shall be given. 
seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you, right? No question at all. The more we seek, the more he gives. Thank you so much for sharing, Brother Steve. We appreciate you, man. Hallelujah. Anyone else? Anyone else want to jump in really quickly? Anyone else want to jump in? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, Pastor Nate. Yes, ma'am. Uh, this is Maxine Carey. Um, I just wanted to share with the church family what I shared with you on Saturday. Um, in my family, the Jones family, we have lost three people in the last, um, I would say, five months. And Saturday, we will be um, laying to rest my other cousin, um, Robert Jones. And I'm just asking everybody to keep him in prayer and also keep um, us in prayer. Okay. We are, we, are, we are strong praying people, faith people, but, you know, God knows best and we are loving people and, and, and we're going to miss Robert a lot. We're going to miss him. So like I said, I shared this with pastor that we um, burn another person in, in my Jones family and just keep us in prayer. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much uh, for sharing sis, sis Max. And we are definitely keeping uh, you guys as well as the Jones family uh, lifted in our prayers. Uh, everyone who is experiencing uh, the pain of grief grief, uh, and separation during this season, uh, especially, we are keeping lifted uh, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, so listen, I know uh, time is far spent. I just wanted to share this with you guys real quick before I let you go. Uh, I, I love this story. I love, 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 love this story. Um, and, and so this is the thing, uh, and it says verse 16, and they went in haste quickly, like they had somewhere to go, <laughs> right? I, I just, I love the word of God. God tells you the little things. He tells you the, the importance of the little thing. They, they, they hurry. They went quickly in search in search now, I, I want you. I want you to understand. They had to go find this, right? Now, uh, the fact that the angel had talked to the shepherds who were castaways, disenfranchised people who were looked at, at as the bottom of the rung of society, the shepherds would have been aware of where the stables were in Bethlehem, right? So they would have known a few different places to look. What it doesn't tell us. Right, because because at this particular the shepherds didn't have no star like the wise men had. They had a message. And they went to find the Christ based off of the message. They didn't have a GPS. What it doesn't tell us is if he was in the first place they looked. And if he wasn't in the first place they looked, they had to look again. And if he wasn't in the second place they looked, guess what? They had to look again. And if he wasn't in the third place that they looked, guess what? They had to look again. Uh, what I'm trying to tell you is uh, keep on looking until you find what it is God told you was supposed to be yours. You might not find it in the first place. You might not find it in the second place. You might not find it in the third place. But by the time you find it now, how do you know that they must have had to go to some different places? Because the Bible says, again, right, here we go. We're going back to the book. The Bible says they made haste. They found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. And when they saw them, they made known all that had been told to them concerning the child. Right, right. And this was that. But all who heard, all who heard, pondered, all who heard. All who heard wondered at what the shepherds told them. What does that mean? That means they told more than Mary and Joseph. Uh, if I went to the first stable, a uh, 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 brother Steve, and he won't dare. Uh, what you looking for? We saw vision. We saw a vision that told us that the savior of the world had been born. And everybody started wondering about the shepherds. Went to the second place. What you looking for? We saw a vision. 
We saw the, the choirs of heaven and the heavenly host singing glory to God in the highest and on earth peace and goodwill toward men. And they wondered about what they were talking about. And then they got to Mary and Joseph and it says, and when they heard Mary treasured these things in her heart. Didn't really have a whole lot to say about it right then. But she held those things close to her heart. She held those things close to her heart as proof that God had not forgotten the promise. Again, we started off talking about how she would have felt if every door that they knocked on was closed to them. And now at this tumultuous journey, at this very real and expected feeling that in some way they have been forgotten, God sends passionate strangers, shepherds, to communicate to them this message that you have birthed the shepherd of all shepherds that he is the hope of humanity, that he is the restorer of mankind. I'm gonna pause there. Thank you all for being here tonight. Thank you uh, for your presence. It matters, it's important. I wanna encourage you, uh, throughout the rest of this week uh, to tell somebody about this personal savior, uh, to tell somebody about this good news, to tell somebody about the universal sacrifice that was given for the sins of humanity. Tell somebody about the Christ who saved your life. And upon telling them, let them know, hey, uh, I would love for you to join me in worship. I would love for you to come and have that experience with me. Let's have that, ex let's have that experience together. Invite them to come to worship with you. Uh, really quick, by way of reminders, uh, uh, again, Chosen for Completion Ministry, C4C, it's having its annual transforming the tree christmas benefit musical slash concert uh this saturday december the 16th at 5 p.m uh 39 afton parkway portsmouth virginia uh we would love to have you any of you who can make it um the the purpose of this uh, annual concert slash musical is to give people an opportunity to partner with us as we partner with individuals who are in need within the community as well as the seven cities what's affectionately referred to as 757 area uh numerous families numerous children uh we partner with during the holiday season uh, just to be the hands and feet of jesus and to show that love to them to let them know that they're remembered uh so we would love to have you uh, if you can make it, uh, and I look forward to uh, seeing you all on Sunday morning as we continue uh, with our series, Get Out. I am super excited about that, been tremendously blessed by that. I can't wait to share with you what God has uh, given me for this week coming up. So uh, let somebody know, just tell somebody about Jesus, man. Uh, you know, and in doing so, you have the potential to save somebody's life. You really do, buddy. We, we do. We have the potential to save somebody's life. So um, I encourage you guys to do that. Again, uh, uh, Sister Max, we are keeping you guys and Jones family lifted. Uh, Father, we thank you for our worship time. We give you glory for our time together. Uh, God, we thank you for the reason for the season. Uh, we thank you, Father, for hearing our hearts uh, and and for being a comfort when we need it, for being guidance when we need it, uh, for restoring when we are in need of it. 
And we give you glory for all of these things, God. Now we pray for anyone that's experiencing hurt and grief in this moment. We pray for the Jones family, uh, Sister Maxine Carey's family, God, and uh, and uh, Brother John and their family, God. And uh, we just pray, Father, that as they navigate uh, these uh, consecutive losses, that you would continue to be the lifter of their head, or that you would continue to comfort their hearts, God, like only you can. Um, we continue, God, uh, uh, to 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 just uh, thank you uh, for being a comfort when we are in need of it. Uh, um, we thank you, God, uh, for continuing to comfort the Mickens family as well uh, as they navigate this season um, without the matriarch uh, of their family in place any longer, God. So, uh, we but we thank you for that legacy. And we thank you uh, for the uh, structure and the strength uh, uh, that uh, was was left uh, by her father. And, and we continue to pray uh, that you would equip us, God, make us able uh, ministers of your gospel together. We would tell somebody about you, uh, the personal Savior, the good news, and the universal sacrifice that you gave for the sins of humanity. Now, fathers, we depart from this place, but never from your presence. Allow no evil to befall us. Neither let any plague come near our tent. Thank you, great God, that you are for giving your angels charge over us to keep us in all of our ways. In the name of Jesus the Christ, that we pray this to God, our Father, through the power and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And we thank you in advance. Amen. 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 God bless you guys. Love you. Heaven smile upon you. Have a great night. Amen. Good night, y'all.